I read the script, and I thought the script was really interesting. Um, I came in for a meeting and met with Mark and Brian, and in talking with them and seeing their, they showed me their demo reel, and the stuff they had on their reel was amazing. Now I've worked on like Bonds as a as a first AC, and you know, I've done quite a lot of action movies as a, an assistant, and um, you know, it, it's much more planned out. It, it's always little bits you're doing, little bits, little tiny bits. You normally cover like the most of the fight as a master, but the key pieces you picked out. Now on this, we threw all that, all that went out straight out of the window. Brian and I have this crazy camera background. We do everything in camera. We like to be very organic. We don't have experience with green screens and uh, you know crazy wire work, so we like to put our actors in peril. Because of the way, I say we had, like we we decided we were going to do these sort of fight sequences or you know shootouts or anything. You know, it was so uncontrived. You could never say, all right, this is the point where we cut to now, we bring the double in. Some of the big sort of action movies of now take weeks and weeks to film. And I know we didn't have weeks and weeks to film them. And I know we didn't have millions and millions of dollars to, to uh, you know, to squander on those particular stunts. So we, they had to get clever. And the only way to get sort of clever is by, you know, using the actors. It saves a lot of time when the actors get into the action. And, um, and we can keep the cameras rolling and moving and, and uh, you know, not have to bring in the stunt guy for the special shot where you see the back of his head or the three quarters back of his head. It really helped us get our days done. And we shot this thing super fast. You know, it was like 30 days and five mini unit days. And you get a film like this and if the actor's on board with it and he really wants to make this character great, it's so fun for me. You know, it's so fun putting him in as much of the spots as we can and just you know, building that character, because everybody shot the back of a stunt double's head. We're not really about shooting the backs of heads. No. It's not that much fun. Full frontal, man. It's just all about full frontal. When was the last time you saw somebody do a helicopter shot where they weren't using green screen? It just doesn't happen anymore. I just assumed this is how it's gonna go, and then you start looking through the pages and you realize the rigging and the harnessing and the helicopters, and you think, these guys are kind of nuts, but if they can get, you know, the double to go along, that'll be great. And then you look down further and you're like, there's no double, that's Jason doing it. Filming Crank was basically a, a little game of, all right, who's the pussy? Is it, it was, you? It was high school. Is it you? Who's the pussy? I know, I know. That's your fucking ego getting in the way again, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, when we was talking about the descender rig and the helicopter and, you know, Mark's there, he's going, yeah, well, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm, I'll, I'll be there right next to you. It's like, well, well, I'm doing it then. <laughs> it can't look any worse than the fucking helicopter, guys. No, it's come on. That was fucking <laughs> high as you like. You know what I mean? It's like boys being boys, isn't it? You know, if you can do it, watch me. I'll, I can do it better than that. That's funny now that I'm hearing the other side of it, which is he was dared to do it. See, the way I heard it was like, Jason wants to do this. I'm thinking, well, great. Number one on the call sheet wants to do it. I got to step up. I got, like, there's a choice there. You know, and it's funny that they were playing the middleman the whole time. But they probably went to Jason like, Jose's over there fucking saying, you won't do this, you fucking pussy. You know, you probably wouldn't do this. You know, I guarantee you now, now looking back, I got to talk to them about that. We did. I mean, we pushed them, uh, both, you know, Jason and Jose a little bit. And Brian and I are maniacs. We hang out at helicopters. We'll hold off the back of motorcycles. We'll do all that stuff. And it was kind of, you know, hey, if I'm going to do it, Brian's going to do it, then the actor should do it. But, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound, once, once you know that they're willing to sort of risk their neck, um, you certainly get off the, uh, off the lazy arse and, and put yourself right in the firing line. And, you know, I, I like doing that anyway. Once I was aware that it was all safe. The thing about Jason is he's not stupid. I mean, he's very, very intelligent about the way that he approaches it. And he has to be because he, as an actor, you know, we're always saying from day one, you know, when this guy, like, grabs his cell phone, he makes it look like an action scene. Everything he does is so sort of 100% physically committed and intense. He doesn't really know how to do it halfway. So in order for him to bring that same commitment and that same intensity when he's got a little cable holding him, he's 3,000 feet, he has to be absolutely sure that everything is rock solid. He was the first actor who actually wanted to he, I had to gain his trust, and I could feel that. You know, at first I said, "Hey, Jason, I want to take this. I want to drop you 200 feet on this wire." And he's like, "Well, I'm not sure I want to let you do that. You know, I don't know who you are." And to me, it was great because 
I know me and I'm comfortable with me, but for him to just jump on a wire, you know, it, 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 it's cool because it lets me know that he's thinking. He's not just willing to do whatever. When it drops you, one side will drop a half a second sooner than that side. And it's just to give you a little action. It's to give you a little move. falling. So you go, mm -hmm. and kind of, whoop. yeah, I'll okay. just play with that. You'll feel it. Most of my confidence comes from my own physical ability. Uh, but on this occasion, we was relying on a lot of machinery and a lot of security harnesses that were going to keep me from falling out of the helicopter or falling 200 feet from the descender rig. And, you know, you've got to just put your faith in it. That's really cool to me because that means we've, you know, I've, I've gained his trust and, you know, he's, he's willing to do it. I mean, that's a huge thing to put your life in someone else's hands. Those stunts were crazy and badass, but I just feel like, yeah, it's, it's Jason Statham. It's a transporter, I mean. This guy's invincible. I never rule anything out. I'm always, uh, I'm always there to step forward. It's just got to be, it's just got to be safe. So, I mean, at that point, once he feels totally secure, and he feels like, I can do this, this is going to work, I'm not going to die, then he just goes balls out, you know, and gives you something that an actor usually won't give you. I, I think it, it, it's really the way, you know, movies, you know, should be shot, and I think that people will be able to look at this film and, and, and realize there's a little something different when they're watching the scene. It isn't put together the way a lot of films are, where you kind of can tell that there's this green screen behind it, I think it adds to the authenticity of the piece. I really wanted to do this movie. Like, there's movies you want to get, you know, for whatever reasons, but this was a movie where I was like, this, this is really going to be cool. That one was great, because, you know, it, I haven't got anything against stuntmen, but normally they are almost the caricature of themselves. It's like, I've seen a commercial where it, uh, it's on and they're all stuntmen just doing loads of stuff just to go to work and, and it seems like that's what stuntmen you know even if you want the most simple thing something like, you know oh you know he's only going to switch a light on but why doesn't he break a glass and switch a light on or do something you know I mean, or why don't we blow the they always want to but darren was totally different than that you know he, he, he never he never overplayed it you know if it needed a stunt he did a stunt if not he didn't you know he didn't get him doing city things, you know? Crank isn't about stunts for stunts sake. I mean, you're not gonna see cars going down the road and all of a sudden smashing into the construction site and spinning 50 feet in the air. Everything, you know, from, from the beginning, from our initial production meetings, we wanted to make things as visceral and as violent as possible to fit, you know, the film. It's kind of a dark comedy with action in it. It's not really a big action movie. It's more of like a dark comedy with action beats in it. And I think the action fits the film well. It's really cool. There's a scene in this movie where Jason steals this motorcycle from a cop, drives down the street, and does what's called an elevator where he jumps from the foot pegs up onto the gas tank and does a tank crash, stands on the tank, and then runs into a cafe. Yeah, I wanted people to see Jason doing this because we could have we could have done it with a stunt man and then you know put Jason on a process trailer and framed him from here up and you know it's been done. First day we went uh, to a, like an airfield, and we skidded around on the big police bike, and they're fucking terrible things to operate. You know, they, they're very heavy, it's like an old horse. You know, it's not like a nimble, sort of a maneuverable, sort of off-road bike. It's just this big, heavy piece of equipment, but it helps when you're taking your hands off and you're going in a straight line, because you can stand there forever. It just, it just flies along. I remember like, jumping up on the bike, and jumping up on the gas tank and being like, I can do this, this is a piece of cake. This should be easy for you. I mean, you're an unbelievable athlete. If you start, you know, hesitating and things can really go wrong and then, you know, you slip and things, you know, you're on the floor and, and you know, the movie's over. So yeah, we all kind of, we learned to do that, yeah, you know, the, the day that it got shown to us. So we built a rig, Matt Kuchar built a trailer that this motorcycle sits on and it, the wheels spin and everything. And then we built an overhead rig with a wire so we put Jason on this wire and we drive this thing down the street with the wheels moving and on action Jason sits and he jumps up and lands on the tank in this full position. It's awesome. Oh my god. We've, we've done a lot of shooting in helicopters. We like flying around in helicopters and hanging out of them. And it's just like ridiculously good fun. And So we knew like whatever actor we got we were going to talk him into getting up there and he, you know. And it was going to go down the way it went down. And again, like we, you know, this whole story came out of the fact that we knew the ending of the movie before we knew the movie. So we always knew that we wanted to drop a guy out of the helicopter and that he was going to fall, you know, 3,000 feet and, you know, smash into the road or a car or something. When we were storyboarding that scene at the end, uh, 
you know, we had our actor hanging out of the helicopter, and you know, in the discussions with the you know, pre-production, it was all about, okay, so we're looking at these pictures, so how are we going to do that? Is that going to be part of our green screen work? Is that going to be with a cable? We're, you know, kind of had to tell them, like, no, I mean, we're just going to do it. I needed to get defibrillated after that stunt. We strapped Jason Statham to the outside of a helicopter, filled it full of people and gear, to the point where the, the uh, pilot was going, well, you know, I hope I have enough gas to get back. Yeah, man, that was the bus. Really? Yeah. He said, well, what makes you think that, that Jason's going to get up in that helicopter? And well, we don't know. I mean, well, let's get the helicopter there. Let's get Jason there, and let's all talk yeah, about it. You he seemed know? like the kind of guy that would be game for it. And I remember really, really clearly on the whole sort of few hours leading up to it. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm... I'm pretty brave and, you know, I've done high dive and I've done a lot of things to, you know, I like scaring myself at times, but, you know, you're on the top of the, uh, one of those tall buildings in downtown LA and, you know, you know, you're a few hundred feet up anyway and, you know, you keep looking over the edge and you have to look down and you see the helicopter and you're sort of looking at your watch, you think, okay, we've rehearsed. I mean, you get that sort of butterfly feeling and it's a funny feeling and you can even embrace it or you can, it can really screw you up. The helicopter takes off of the roof of a 400-foot building, so the helicopter takes off and then moves 20 feet, and then already you're 400 feet in the air. I remember when I was first, when I first stood on the skids. You know, these people say things to you, and you know, you try not to look down, and I could think, what are you telling me that for? You know, you, you're trying to make, you know, trying to sort of give me some confidence. It's like, fuck it, you know, better look. You, if you're going to get scare yourself immediately, and then it'll go away. So as soon as we plopped off the side of the tall building, you know, it was up a few, you know, maybe 50 feet. I had a little look down, it was like, fucking hell, now I know what he meant by don't look down. And there's a moment in the dailies when he looks down, he's like, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> he's like, whoa. Both Verona and Jason were, were cabled into the helicopter, but with Jason, because there's so much movement in that fight, we couldn't just lock him in there. You want to put the wire so that you're actually really far out over, so you can fall out of the door what they want. So that's where you start. You're kind of out of the door. He has to be able to move and he's standing on the skids. So we have him hooked to two wires, but they have slack. I mean, he had to he had to put so much trust in this rig because when he takes the reaction, he goes all the way back and it's letting go of the helicopter and everything. You mean you're fighting in a restricted space. I mean, there's not a lot of room in those fucking helicopters. They're not designed to have fight scenes, you know, in or on the outside of. And the wind would hit us and we were just kind of rocking and it's like you ready to go? You rolling? We just—you couldn't even hear him. Just get the hand signal and just keep going through the fight sequence, whatever you want to do. And so he would set, and he would put him down, and I would look left, and I'd just kind of look for a second, and boom, we'd get into it. And it was such a huge thing for him to do, and he did it and nailed it every time. I don't think you can kind of green screen those kind of uh, those moments because you know you can see it in the in the actor's eyes. I mean, I saw it with with Jose, and I'm sure he saw it when he was looking back at me. You know, it's, uh, you're up there and, and you're doing it for real. There's not much acting to do, you know I mean? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's real and you're, you know, you're fighting up there and it's, uh, you, you know, the, the blood's rushing through your veins. But because of him, because of his incredible commitment to realism and not chickening out on anything, we got an unbelievable sequence out of it. <laughs> Center rig was wild. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it's like something out of Fear Factor. And it went away. At the beginning of the film, they cut it. And when we did the helicopter fight stuff, it looked so good, because we're not doing green screen. It's real, and it's really Jason Statham doing it. They saw, you know, Lakeshore went and looked at the footage and went, oh my god. So they brought back the Descender rig, and I think it's great, because that's the end of the film. You know, they're falling from a helicopter, and I think it's great to see Jason Statham actually doing this fall. You know, the public should, should see that. We are 220 feet up in the air on wires. Uh, Brian and I took turns camera operating on one wire while Jason was on the other wire. Um, and we're doing a free fall drop from 220 feet. It's des designed rather well, that piece of equipment. And it free falls you for the first 150 feet and then the brakes kick in and then you gradually start to come to a stop. 24 feet before you hit the ground, the decelerator kicks in and slows you down so that you don't slam into the pavement. Hopefully. Hopefully. You know, you hope, you hope it works. Um, 
and we got up there and, and we just had we had a lot of fun with it. It was like a Six Flags ride or something, you know. That is fucking awesome. Oh, you've got your swing to go. <laughs> Jason again watched the stunt guy do the test run a couple of times. You know, I was quizzing Darren and everybody there that was involved. And uh, you know, what if this computer fails? Uh, you know, so you'll be on the red button, yeah. Uh, but what if that fails? And stunt equipment of today is is uh, much safer than years and years ago. I can remember the first time I ever saw one of those descender rigs was when uh, there was an old stuntman called Dar Robinson. Uh, I think it was operated by an old sort of a like a handbrake. Uh, that was the uh, the pull on the handbrake kind of slowed it all down. It was like if that fucks up, that's the end of him. So um, yeah, things have come a long way in terms of stunt equipment. Jason just fully committed to the to the shot, and Brian and I just fully committed to camera operating on the on that machine. Yeah, it was a fucking, it was a real funny feeling. It's like being on a roller coaster times ten. Oh man, <laughs> that fucking wakes you up. Yeah, it was great. I mean, it, I really loved it. I did, I did really enjoy that uh, that sequence, and they got some great sort of uh, footage from it as well. They wanted us to do it. They said as soon as you get the shot. We, we, we need to stop because this is kind of dangerous. And we had the shot on like the third take, but we wanted to go, I think we went 17 times. <laughs> I was going to say like 16 takes yeah, later. We're we, just like, yeah. I think we need to do it again. <laughs> we didn't quite get it that time. But I would have much preferred to be looking down at the ground and letting drop me face first. You know, there's a re you can really uh, accommodate yourself with, you know, moving objects and, you know, things coming up your way. You, you, you kind of know where you're at. It gives you some kind of orientation. We ran out of film with the camera, and we were still just like, yeah, let's try it one more time. I don't know. Jason didn't seem to mind either. You know what? That was no fun. <laughs> but, you know, we did a few of those, and after, like, 10, you kind of lost the sensation. You get, your body adjusts, you get used to it, and it's like, well, have we got it yet or not? I mean, you start to lose that sort of uh, that excitement. So, yeah, we... Uh, we cracked on and we did it. Good? All right, we'll bring you down. 